I'm here with David Wright. David is in our studio at Fitness for 10 in Carson City. Thanks for being here, David. Thanks for having me, Steve. All right, we're going to talk about cardio. And some of this might be a little controversial, um, but there's so many opinions out there, and it's always changing one way or the other. If you guys are in the Carson City area, you can go down to Carson City and say hi to David. He's in the Carson City Fitness for 10. So, cardio. I know you're actually preparing for a show that's how many weeks out now? Uh, just over 14 weeks out right now. 14 yeah, I don't weeks know when this people Saturday. are going to be watching this, but at the time of this conversation, it's 14 weeks out. Yep. And, you know, I've, I've tried to get really, really lean before and had some pretty good success. I've probably been down at my best. I mean, I was probably 5%, you know. Um, back in the day. Um, and first you have a lot of clients, but you have your own philosophy on cardio and, um, I have my own philosophy and, and what I do. There's three components of fitness. Your cardiovascular health is one, your strength or resistance training and your flexibility. So there's three things that you have to do. Strength train, you got to do cardio and flexibility mm -hmm. to hit those three components of fitness. So we were talking in the gym earlier today and you said sometimes you have clients that go, yeah, I've been doing an hour of cardio every day. And you kind of discourage that. Why? Yeah, I, I discourage that with clients. Like you said, everybody kind of has their own philosophy, but uh, for my clients and my training style, um, my recommendations to my clients is always sure. Come into the gym, do some warm up cardio, five, maybe 10 minutes maximum. And then at that point, you know, come in to the rest of the gym, do your workout, do your resistance training, your, your flexibility, you know, stability type training, any of the other stuff you want to do in the gym. And then if you want to go and hit 30 minutes, 20 minutes, 15 minutes of cardio afterward, that's fantastic because it keeps that heart rate up, keeps it going, but you don't want to, you know, run out the tank of gas, so to speak, before you get to your resistance training, because then at that point, you're not getting the most out of that. So my conversation with my clients is always, let's warm up a little bit, five minutes, let's go do our whole workout routine, get everything going, do our resistance training. And then afterwards, the recommendation is, depending on their goal, of course, is, you know, do this much cardio, or if they come in on their own without a training day, it's the same thing. You know, we want to follow the same type of routine, do the cardio, majority of that cardio after your workout. Or if you're coming in just to do cardio, that's okay too, but still stick to a reasonable time frame. And to me, reasonable is 30 minutes or less. I, and I, I, I'm agreeing with you, and I think your philosophy is in line with this, is that you don't energy is stored in the muscle cells, right? Mm -hmm. Right. So that's your energy in the form of ATP. Well, when you do cardio, you're using mostly oxygen, but you're also depleting that stored energy in the muscle cell. So what you're saying is you don't want your clients to tap into that or deplete at all to deplete that at all until they lift weights, because you want all that energy, all that ATP, that, first um, initial um, burst of energy to go into lifting weights, correct? Exactly. That's exactly right. That's my philosophy with them is to always put that most energy in there because afterwards you can always go and do, you know, mild cardio or, you know, depending on the goal and the, the level that the person's at physically. I mean, they could be even more intense cardio, but, you know, save that for the end so you have that that ATP and all that burst of energy for your resistance training. Right. And when you, when you use that glycogen in the muscles, your body has to put it back together. Your body has to put it back. So it's going to take either fat um, or carbohydrates in your diet, or it's going to take fat, subcutaneous fat or fat from your body and change it, change its form and put it back into the uh, cells for energy. Um, so, you know, we, we talked about the three components of fitness and if I could only choose, and I'm not advocating this, you know, I've done a lot of shorts and stuff on this. I'm not saying don't work on your flexibility, don't stretch and don't do cardio. I'm not saying that. But if I, 
if I had to pick just one, no doubt it would be resistance training. What about you? So I, I'd be on that same page, Steve. I, I would say I would never tell somebody not to do the other pieces of it, but you know, with resistance training, there's a lot that you can and sometimes are doing depending on your your workout routine or different exercises you're doing where you're getting cardio, uh, cardiovascular workout within that resistance training, depending on how you train and things like that. So if I had to, maybe I had a limited amount of time, maybe it's a lunch break and that's, I've got 30, 40 minutes to, to do something. I would want the benefits of the resistance training versus maybe coming in for 30 minutes of the treadmill, so to speak. So I would always recommend if you're limited on time or just really want to, you know, maybe you're just starting out, you know, spend majority of your time on that resistance training and then incorporate other things as you go along. Yeah. And I mean, I'll tell you what I do. And, um, I like those step mills that we have in our clubs and, um, you know, you hear so many different opinions on this and rightfully so, because every one is different. You hear a lot of social media influencers, fitness influencers, swear by cardio and say, you need to do more cardio. You need to do more, more, more. You need to get your heart rate up more. And some people are just into walking. So you're going to get all these different opinions, but you got to match up your diet, you know, how many calories you're eating with the energy that you're expending also. So my opinion certainly is not the only one out there. And I'm not claiming to be a doctor or a, any type of, you know, physiologist or scientist, but I'm just someone who's been doing this all my life. And so I, I can relate my own experience. And so I'm going to tell you what I do. But again, some people just swear by the cardio and think it's the most important. You know, they're going to get their weight training in. Most people would agree that you want to do the weight training first. You're going to warm up and then do your resistance training and then your cardio or you're going to do, you know, all the cardio you want on a day off. So most people I think would agree with that, that you don't want to go do a 45 minute cardio session or even a 30 minute cardio session before you lift weights because of what we talked about earlier. But what I like to do, and I even hear doctors saying that, you know, the distance stuff, the, the cardio is not helping. I, I can't remember the doctor's name uh, talking about he emphasizes, you know, getting rid of visceral fat and um, fatty liver. And he says sprinting is better. So you know what? Sprinting is great. I mean, you can we we're talking earlier. I'll go down to the park sometimes and run wind sprints. I certainly don't run them very fast. People would think I'm jogging my wind sprints at my age now. Um, I guess I probably am just jogging my wind sprints, but they're still wind sprints to me. It's still winding me. Um, so what I do is I like to do that and I like to, I'll go for walks. I'll go for a 20 minute walk after a meal. And I think that's very beneficial. But what I do after my workout, I usually do this after my workout is I'll go to that step mill five minutes. And in five minutes, I can do the equivalent of 15 to 20 flights of stairs. So mm -hmm. if you went up 15 to 20 flights of stairs every day, well, for me, it's like five days a week in the gym, that can change your life. You know, and I don't really call it cardio because my intensity level is a little higher, but that's what I do. Um, what, what, what do you find or, you know, when you're really trying to get lean, what's your go-to, you know, profile as far as cardio and your overall workout program? Yeah. So for me, and, you know, for example, right now, we're not quite to the point where we're driving down the body fat uh, in a quick fashion, but it is slowly, you know, that's, that's the process right now. However, you know, on a normal basis, I normally also use the, the stair mill uh, as well. My coach is always very adamant about if you're going to go in, you're going to do cardio, do the stair mill, do it every time because, you know, you're, you're using so much of those leg muscles, you know, you're using all the major parts. And so unlike say a treadmill, which again, I'm not saying not to use a treadmill or an elliptical or a bike, they're all great, get your heart rate up. But if you're looking for a good challenge or even just for a couple minutes for me right now, because I'm in show prep, it's about a half an hour after my workout. So I'm on there for a longer duration, but for people who aren't preparing for a show, you know, my, 
you know, suggestion to them is if they're physically able to do stair mill, you know, absolutely do the stair mill because it gets all of those leg muscles working so well. Um, and they don't have to do it for a long time. To your point, you know, you can go up 15, 20 flights of stairs in practically no time. Now, it doesn't feel like no time uh, when you're not used to the stair mill or sometimes even if you are, but, um, you know, versus, you know, kind of the, the heavy intensity of a treadmill having that that pounding on, on, on the belt there going on, it's a little more impact on, on the knees and stuff like that. So I like to tell my clients, you know, the ones that are able to go do the stairs, and of course I've fully evaluated them by then, you know what, don't go do 10 minutes on the stair mill or, you know, something like that, or whatever is their, their particular level. But normally I would do the stair mill, um, you know, Treadmill's great if that's something that somebody is comfortable with, depending on their workout program and, and their capabilities physically and otherwise. Um, but yeah, I think it's really important to include cardio. And I'll tell you, Steve, I, I've heard uh, some crazy stuff, whether it be online or, you know, from people that I know, oh, you shouldn't even do, you know, stop doing cardio because all your muscles are going to go away and, you know, you're going to just eat right through them and stuff like that. So there's a lot of misinformation out there. Um, now, granted, we could have you know, some problems if you're trying to, you know, grow, you know, bigger, gain some lean mass, and you're coming in and doing an hour of cardio every day, that's, that's going to be a problem. Because unless you're eating tons and tons and tons of food, getting a bunch of quality sleep, drinking a ton of water, all the things that you need to do, if you're doing a ton of cardio, you know, you're, you're going to probably have some growing issues. But for the regular person who's not doing an hour of cardio, they're just coming in, they enjoy uh, cardio here in the gym or even outside jogging, walking, whatnot, you know, that's not, I, I don't want people to, to turn the other way from cardio. I don't want them to be afraid of cardio because of the, you know, Oh, you know, maybe I should just not go to the gym at all because you know, I, I don't know how to do weights and I shouldn't do cardio according to so-and-so, or you know, on the internet. So I think the, the best advice I have for people as far as cardio is, you know, yes, it needs to be part of your workout program. You need to, you know, do the resistance training. You need to have some cardio in your life. And if that's not necessarily time in the gym, you know, you mentioned walking, you know, after, you know, a dinner or a lunch meal or breakfast, even, you know, walk outside in your own neighborhood. You know, that's, that's right there and accessible to you. Get moving, stay moving. That's cardio. It's not high intensity, but it doesn't need to be. You just need to be moving and get, getting your body moving. And that's the most important thing. Yeah, that's such a great point, David. And people don't do it. It's easy to do, but it takes a, it just takes a little bit of discipline to go for a 20 minute walk once a day. Everyone can find a place to do that somewhere outside if it's not on a treadmill in a gym. But my go to is I, I like to finish off a, a solid leg day. You know, when I'm working my legs hard, I like to finish it off with that step mill. Um, it, it just it's a great little it just adds that last little finish you know, to, to a uh, leg day. And you're right, it, it's working your whole lower body. Well, and part of the benefit too, uh, on top of, you know, just being a, a great feeling at the end of a workout is, um, in, in all reality, you know, the more that you do that particular stair mill machine, this is another reason why I like it is, you know, even if it's not a leg day, maybe you came in and did full body or whatever your particular workout was, and you ended with the stair mill. That, that because it works your legs so much, of course, using your own body as the weight that's going up those stairs constantly. I mean, you're building your leg muscles as you're going up, you know, those stairs, those flights of stairs, however many you end up doing on, on an each day basis. And so it helps keeps, keep those, you know, leg muscles, you know, toned up, growing, you know, continuously, not fast, you know, and nothing's overnight but it will keep them in, in great shape. And so for me, as an example for the show, that's perfect because, you know, legs are really important. So it helps, you know, continue the definition that I'm trying to grow and continue to show stuff like that and growing those leg muscles because it keeps them active so much every day. So I'm in the gym six to seven days a week right now in prep. So, you know, it's a great exercise. And for people who are here one, two, three days a week, four days a week, even, you know, incorporating something like the stair mill is is fantastic for them and for movement and for you know continuing that growth even when they're doing some other kind of a workout it's fantastic yeah and it's even like you know you did your leg day the day before it's great for active recovery just to move those muscles the next day or two 
and that'll help keep you know some of the soreness out but it's just you know moving those muscles it's okay to move those muscles again when you worked them hard the day before so oh um, yeah david we appreciate your input on this and your thoughts on cardio uh now if someone wants to follow you how do they get a hold of you or how do they follow you on on social media yeah, so for me, I have two social media pages. Feel free to, to look me up, follow either one or both. Uh, it'd be greatly appreciated. So Instagram, uh, there's at Right Fitness Training. That's W-R-I-G-H-T, Fitness Training. So that's my specific fitness training page as a personal trainer and nutrition coach. Uh, and then I have my personal Instagram, which kind of goes more into my personal fitness journey, which is at David Wright underscore fitness. And so follow me and, and find me on either one of those. All right. Thanks for being with us, David, and we will see you next time. All right.